When I was in junior high school, I started searching for information about metaphysics, um, about paranormal phenomena. Um, I uh, visited a spiritualist church. And uh, in ninth grade, I started attending a meditation group that was uh, run by a unity minister. And um, during this period of searching, um, I, I happened to go on a camping trip with my father and younger brother in Trabuco Canyon, which is in Orange County, California. And at the end of this canyon is O'Neill Park. And it was a very nice place to camp. Um, but on our way to the park, we were going through this windy section of the road where live oak trees form a canopy over the road, a very romantic kind of storybook um, scene. And as we were winding through the canyon, we came around a bend, and there suddenly was this sign that said Ramakrishna Monastery. Now, this was just one more interesting, mysterious um, occurrence in this period of time when I was seeking out such things, and I asked my father if he knew this place or if these place was connected to an ashram we used to visit when I was a child, and he said he thought it was. And so I asked him if he would uh, take me there. I couldn't drive yet. I was not yet 16. So he said he would drive me up there. And we did drive up there one uh, late morning. And um, we arrived at the monastery, which uh, looked like an old... Franciscan mission. It had these whitewashed walls and brick stairway, I'm sorry, brick um, walkways and stairways, and then the Spanish tile roofs with the open beams. And uh, we walked up, it was deadly quiet except for this crunch, crunch, crunch of our feet in the gravel pathway. Didn't see anybody around until we got up into this arch through which we could see a statue of a man wearing a turban and sitting in a meditation posture in front of a little pond that had water plants in it. And uh, suddenly this very handsome man comes out, mid-30s, um, bright blue eyes and uh, dark hair, and he introduced himself as uh, one of the monks. He informed us that we were just a few minutes late past visiting hours, but since we'd come all that way, he would, and, and my father told him that we used to go to this other ashram. He said, okay, I'll give you a little tour this time. Come back another time, you'll get a more thorough tour. So he took us into the library. He told us the place had been, showed us, um, he showed us a photo of a, a man with a Van Dyke beard, and said, that's Gerald Hurd. He built this monastery. Uh, many years later, I learned that Gerald Hurd was gay and that his lover, Chris Wood, had funded this project and that Gerald had been a kind of a, a guru at, at, uh, and uh, was running this sort of spiritual college for a few years until he became tired of it, and then he gave it over to the Vedanta Society, and his guru, Swami Prabhupada, who later became my own, and, uh, and then it became Ramakrishna Monastery in 1948. In any case, um, in that library, I saw a little sculpture of a man sitting in meditation posture, and that caught my eye. I didn't really pay a lot of attention to it, but I just really thought, that's interesting. Then. The monk took us into this long dining hall, it had some paintings of what looked like yogis or something on the walls, and there was a little book kiosk where he was uh, inviting us to look at some of their books. And uh, But I was mesmerized by a photograph, a life-size photograph at the far end of the hall on the wall, up a little couple of stairs. Um, and this photograph was of this bearded, half-naked, 
um, Hindu looking man with a cloth across his chest, his bare chest and his arms, his hands crossed before him, sitting in a meditation posture and looking like he was deep in meditation. And I was b very nervous, um, but I asked the, uh, the monk, who is that? I'm sure he told me, well, that's Ramakrishna, and he was the founder of our order. I don't remember the name sticking at that time, although I guess I could have guessed it from the name of the monastery. But anyway, that wasn't important. It was something about that image that just absolutely grabbed my imagination. And I, I asked my father when we got home to get me some modeling clay. He was a kind of an artist and he knew about that kind of stuff, I assumed. So he got me a big block of clay and I began with my very meager ability to sculpt to the best of that ability uh, that image of that man sitting cross-legged with the beard in meditation. And when it dried, I put it on my chest of drawers and I used to where I used to sit for meditation and sat in front of it um, uh, meditating on that image nobody had told me to do that it just felt like the most natural thing for me more natural than the kind of meditate on the light kind of meditation I had been doing with unity and so <clears throat> um, that's how I got introduced to Ramakrishna at that point I didn't really know anything about him I hadn't read any of his teachings. I didn't know anything about his life history. But that image so captured my imagination, so touched my heart, um, that I really never looked back or looked anywhere else for spiritual information. Um, and of course, then I later did read his teachings and read his life stories. Um, and the more I learned, the more deeply devoted I became by his grace and um, have felt that he has guided me really my whole life. Um, and uh, for that, I'm deeply grateful.